everybody for being out here. This is a, an amazing moment for me personally, and to see you all out there is just really beautiful. Thank you. Give yourselves a round of applause for being out here for the climate. My name is Bobby. I'll be the MC of the speaker session today, and we'll be learning a few more chants and songs along the way. But first, we're going to hear from our first speaker. So next up is Weston. He's a software engineer from Amazon Go. Everyone give him a round of applause. Welcome to the global climate movement. Welcome to all my Amazon co-workers. To the Google workers who have joined us here today. And to all tech workers who can no longer sit at our desks and be silent as we speed towards global ecological collapse. First, I'd like to acknowledge that we are here on the unceded ancestral land of the Duwamish people. From Standing Rock in North Dakota, to the Kinder Morgan Pipeline in British Columbia, the fight for survival in the face of the fossil fuel industry has long been led by indigenous people. Unfortunately, the Duwamish do not yet have federal government recognition. I encourage everyone here to visit realrentduwamish.org to help mitigate this injustice. Yesterday, Amazon publicly committed to company-wide carbon reduction for the first time in its history. here who have lent our voices to this movement, we know this is our victory. Yeah. Yeah. We are all standing here at the beginning of something new in our industry. Tech workers with a common purpose, acting together to push our companies to take responsibility for their impact on the world. This is a victory, but it's also just the beginning. Plans must be implemented, and as we all know, implementation details do matter. <laughs> Amazon is still profiting from technology specifically designed to speed the detection, development, and extraction of fossil fuel. Amazon is still funding lobbyists and politicians who deny the climate reality. We still have work to do. And as we implement our goals, we must consider who is hurt the most by our current fossil fuel pollution. It is often those who have benefited the least from the prosperity created by burning those fuels. Poor, often non-white neighborhoods in cities like San Bernardino, a hub of Amazon shipping, are exposed to disproportionate amount of toxic emissions from our trucking. As Amazon reduces its carbon footprint, it must prioritize communities like these where the harm is already so great. A year ago, I couldn't have imagined any of this. And then I saw 20,000 workers at Google stand up, walk out, and win. The bravery and imagination of our colleagues at Google and elsewhere in the tech industry have showed us this is possible. And by being here today, we at Amazon will inspire others. 
at Microsoft, Facebook, Apple. Tech workers all over the world are watching, learning, and standing with us. Together, we will decarbonize our entire industry. A year ago, I felt alone. This morning, I feel something different. I knew if I stood up from my desk to walk out here, my coworkers would stand up from theirs and join me. Yeah. Today, we celebrate what we've already achieved, but we will not take our eyes off of Amazon's carbon emissions. We will not allow Amazon to continue polluting frontline communities. We will not stop until we work for a zero carbon company. To get there, we must act boldly, we must act now, and we must act together. Thank you. Let's hear one more time for Weston. Great speech. Yeah. All right. Next up for speakers, we have a special guest from Google joining us. It's here for the Google employees also participating today. We have Sam. She's a UX designer from Google. Here she is. Give it up for Sam. Fixing this 
is not only on us, but it is on us. Tech workers are standing up and demanding that we act now, not in the name of reckless disruption, not in the pursuit of profit, but in the name of compassion, in pursuit of justice for all people of this planet who are affected by our actions, regardless of whether we consider them our customers, regardless of whether they buy our products or click our ads. Everyone is impacted by the changes we make, and we have to consider people first, humanity first across the globe. This means committing to solving this crisis not only as individuals, but as professionals. Climate change is and must be a work-appropriate conversation. Climate action! Climate action is your job! This, <laughs> this means living our values, walking into the office every day ready to reassert what you believe in. Compassion, justice, love. This means supporting your fellow workers. We are a community united across tech, across countries. We are not Google. We are not Amazon or Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Twitter. We are human beings and we need each other right now. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. So, you might go back to your regular life, into the office and feel alone again. And when that happens, I want you to remember what this looks like. Look around. These are your co-workers spread across the city, united in the same fight. Regardless of where you work, you are working together. This is your community, and we will still be here after tomorrow. Yeah. Before we get into the next song, I want you to meet your neighbors. So turn to the person next to you, and repeat after me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. You are a badass for being here. You are a badass for being here. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. Thank you. All right, keep it going for Sam from Google and all the other employees other tech companies that have joined us here today. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to introduce our last speaker here. Then I will be back one more time. We'll learn one more song, and then we're going to begin the march. And thank you again to everybody here for being here and standing up for climate. I love you guys. Everybody's been badass, and you're all super brave. All right. Okay, our last speaker is a senior PMT for analytics here at Amazon. Her name's Roshni. Give it up for Roshni. Hey everyone. If you're wondering what it's like to give the last speech after those two speeches, it's really scary. <laughs> um, but what an awesome way to spend a Friday afternoon, am I right? <laughs> On Monday, when someone asks you what you were doing over the weekend, you can legitimately say, you know, just out saving the world, the usual. Let me go get my cape. Nice, I'm glad. But on a more serious note, we've all made the choice to leave our work and responsibilities to follow our convictions today. So I first want to give us a shout out. You made it here despite the habit of eating lunch at your desk to get in more working hours. Despite the tiredness from taking overnight meetings across the globe. That's me for sure. And any other silent life circumstances that you may have, that you're going through, you left that and you made it here. Give yourself a round of applause. Because of our efforts, 
We have achieved an important milestone in the history of the tech industry. Amazon's newly announced Climate Pledge. This announcement proves that collective action works. And that employees should be inspired to help and ask more of their employers. Whether it be for bold climate leadership or otherwise. But let's, you know what, let's forget about the boring lives of adults for a second and focus on something else. The youth and how different their world is from the one that we grew up in. When I was growing up and problems in the world came up, I trusted the adults to handle it because adults told me they were wiser, more capable, and, you know, more responsible than me. I mean, I would literally think, you got this right? and then I'd go back to watching TV. That type of blind trust led to a peace of mind which allowed me and others like me to be carefree and frankly irresponsible a lot of the time. But the youth of today don't have this option. The youth of today have more information from the internet than ever before. And so they know that they're facing large, formidable challenges that they did not contribute to, but will inherit and so they cannot blindly trust their future to the adults because we haven't done a great job. So they had a choice to let the adults deal with their future problems or do it themselves. And they chose to rise to the ch challenge and have done a phenomenal job of it. <laughs> For those who may not know, the global climate strike was inspired by 16-year-old Greta Thunberg and her nice. and her Fridays for Future movement, where students would walk out from class every Friday in order to protest the political inaction towards climate change. If it wasn't for the youth taking a stand by planning these Friday strikes and basically saying, enough is enough, our life and future is literally on the line here, the rest of us would not have gotten the chance now to create one of the largest movements in recorded history. Over the past couple days, many colleagues of all levels have come up to me at work and said that they are joining the global walkout because their children care about it. The youth. So thank you to all the youth and students who encouraged us to get up and roll with our feet. And for reminding us what it's like to be full of passion and optimism. That life isn't just about what should we eat tonight or about paying the bills, but showing us that we can do more with our lives, that we can help to change the world if we choose to learn from the youth, to open up our hearts, grab hold of our courage to do what is right for the world. So let's start walking and join the youth at City Hall in a couple moments and let the next generation know that we, the adults, have their backs and that their future co-workers are just as passionate as they are. Thank you. All right, one more time for Roshni. Yeah. Hello. My name is Shmay, and I'm the founder and current president of the Students for Free Tibet chapter at the University of Washington. And uh, thanks. I'm here just to give a statement. But first, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we're in the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish tribe. And I'd like to honor and gratitude the land of itself and the Duwamish people. So, in the six decades since its violent occupation by China in 1959, Tibet has garnered attention as a human rights cause, but a highly overlooked aspect of Tibet is its role in the climate conversation. For thousands of years, the people of Tibet have protected the environment and water reserves through responsible nomadic and agricultural lifestyles. However, China's occupation and exploitation of the land has created a climate crisis in Tibet. 
climate change affects Tibet at a greater margin than nearly any region in the world. Tibet is warming up at a rate up to three times faster than the global average, resulting in accelerated glacial melting and significant impacts on river flow. China directly benefits from exploiting Tibet's rivers through extensive damming for hydropower, but continued environmental degradation and conscious destruction result in irreversible damage. Known as the Third Pole, Tibet holds the largest reserve of glacial freshwater outside the North and South Pole. The ongoing damming projects funded by Chinese government-backed companies have resulted in a drastic shift of the mineral composition of rivers, wreaking havoc on animal and plant ecosystems. Damming has resulted in the forced relocation of countless Tibetans because of the jeopardization of safety with increased earthquake vulnerability. There is grave uncertainty for the nearly 2 billion people downstream who rely on Tibet's river. While China's exploitation of Tibet's environment continues, Tibetans remain as one of the most important yet un under-acknowledged and marginalized frontline communities in the conversations about climate change and justice. The current climate crisis in Tibet is a result of decades of extractive colonialism and corporate greed that have infringed on the rights of the Tibetan people. At Students for a Free Tibet, we remain committed to our vision in which we aim to inspire and enable people, especially youth, to create a just and equitable world free of oppression in which there's respect for the earth and all living things. To do this, we feel that it is absolutely essential to engage in intersectional space with other like-minded frontline communities. We believe that all frontline communities, including the people of Tibet, have a basic right to uphold agency over the decisions that impact their homeland. Tibetans have nurtured, defended, and protected the land for a millennia. We honor this ongoing stewardship and call on the people around the world to join us in our demand for the protection and restoration of Tibet's environment and immediate end to nomad displacement and mining of sacred Tibetan lands. Thank you so much. Hurricane Dorian, Hurricane Maria, Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Florence, the Bahamas, the Philippines, Puerto Rico and Houston, Wilmington, North Carolina, fires in Paradise, California. Most of us here see the connection between global warming and those extreme weather events. We know that weather and climate are not the same. Where there's a specific daily pattern of, and, weekly, uh, 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 and weekly phenomenon of storms. Climate is a longer term pattern or trend of heat, cold, wind and rain. But most of us here do understand that weather is connected to climate, that global warming is impacting weather. Hurricanes pull more water from the oceans and are creating unprecedented flooding, even today, because of our warming air and water. Summer temperatures have soared to more dangerous new records in the last decade than in any other. However, many people don't understand the weather climate connection and their local weather forecaster may be the only scientists that they regularly contact in their daily lives. Unfortunately, very few weather reporters integrate climate science into their weather stories. It's as if there are no trends, no patterns, no role that climate change is, plays in this random hurricane over here, this record rainfall, this heat wave, this rampaging fire. In some cases, the weatherman may have political views, so they don't want us to understand the connection. Climate impacts are often best solved by governmental action, something that conservatives and libertarians fend off at all costs. For too long, Cliff Mass, a tenured but controversial UW atmospheric sciences professor, has minimized the impact of climate on weather and downplayed the significance of climate change in the audio feature, Weather with Cliff Mass, broadcast on KNKX three times per week. Cliff Mass is a climate minimalist who denies that the Pacific Northwest will be affected at all until later in the century. He's a meteorologist, but not a cl trained, cl trained climate scientist, and his positions are often in disagreement with the vast majority of climate scientists. Cliff Mass advocated against the Carbon Fee Initiative 1631, which would have paid, placed a carbon fee on major polluters. And he used pigs at a trough to describe the beneficiaries of 1631's Green Rural Jobs Program. He also wrote the no on 1631 argument in the Voter's Guide. The station KNKX has run some good stories on climate, local climate justice issues, but their large donors, Puget Sound Energy, 
and Tote Maritime are LPG fossil fuel proponents. On air, Cliff Mass still actively denies climate change impacts and complains about there being too much coverage of climate change in the local media. He even sends listeners to his political blog during the broadcast. He has become the Tim Iman of climate impact deniers. I'm going to read some things that Cliff Mass says in Weather with Cliff Mass in his writings and in his books. You tell us if you think real climate science scientists would agree. First, climate change won't affect the Pacific Northwest for another 50 years. No way! There's very little we can do about climate change. Wrong. Climate change is largely out of our control. Wrong. Snowpack reduction is not human caused. Forest fires are caused by forest mismanagement and humans living too far out in the woods. At this pivotal time in history, the decisions we make will truly determine the fate of our planet and its ability to sustain life. We do not need climate reporting that is incomplete, biased, and politically motivated. We must have the facts, and we depend on the media to provide that. So today we are announcing the launch of a petition calling on one of our most popular local radio stations, Seattle Tacoma-based NPR station KNKX, to discontinue its weekly program called Weather with Cliff Mass. Yeah, Please sign our online petition circulating now, and we also have uh, clipboards circulating in the audience now. Thank you so much. Go and share it. Thank you. Two years ago, I had a dream. I was walking down a river with my brother and my parents. We were headed somewhere with urgency. I could feel it in the energy that surrounded us. The woods distracted me. I could feel how they were alive around us. We had to step over and around the chaotic wild roots of the trees that looked like they could touch the sky. In a large river, the salmon rushing with the currents, sun poured down through the branch th branches, illuminating the ground that was covered with moss and fungi. I was hit by the raw feelings the wild evoked from me. As we kept walking, a fear started to grow in the pit in my stomach. The river started to pull away from the edge of the forest as it lessened in size. The trees lost some of their fullness. Our urgency increased and the fear bubbled up in me. The forest became thinner while the river kept shrinking. The rocks and the fish left out to dry. The salmon were flopping on the bare ground and soon enough they were all dead. I looked around and all I could see was dry cracked soil, desert. My name is Isabella Blue Sherry. I'm the lead organizer of Fridays for Future here in Seattle. All right! Thank you. I share this story with you because this is where I finally swore to use my voice, to fight for our Earth, for our future. This is where I couldn't ignore the truth anymore. Our Earth as we know it is dying. I'm 16 years old, now 17, and I was born into a dying world. That is the single scariest fact that every young person on our planet holds on their shoulders. We lose our siblings of the earth daily to our fossil fuel addiction. We have lost entire species and we will lose many more. Down to the genomes, life is changing, losing our genetic diversity. Our forests are disappearing, burning away. Our ice is melting and the storms we will see have barely even started. This is just by the warming of one degree Celsius. We are on track for our world to become exponentially worse. They're getting closer by the day. It's becoming too late to reverse, yet no one seems to be addressing with the, this with the urgency that is needed. Every Friday, children around the school are leaving, leaving around the world to go tell the world that we deserve a future. We can't wait any longer. Every week we leave school to come here and plead for one. What kind of world do we live in where this is necessary? But this is our world and it is our responsibility as part of life to fight for this beautiful planet. We lose almost 5 million human lives per year to fossil fuel pollution and the effects of climate change. This is not some distant catastrophe that will hit long in the future. This is the genocide that is being carried out every single day. We have fallen into a system of apathy and denial fueled by the media, consumerism, and our long work days. Our arts don't reflect Mother Earth, but instead the dollar. We are told to spend more than we are told to love. We are expected to, look, to live our lives always looking for more possessions and less for natural beauty. 
This brings me to a quote written by Daisaku Ikeda. The desertification of our planet is created by the desertification of the human spirit. We cannot allow our conscience to fall into sand anymore. It is our time to stand for our planet every day. We are part of this earth and it is time to return to that knowledge. To hold our governments and our corporations accountable for the damage they are causing. Every one of you has the power to make a difference in this movement. It is time we use that power. For we can still be one with a healthy planet. We just have to allow ourselves to care. Thank you. My name is Parisa Harvey, I'm 15 years old, and I'm a Seattle City Organizer for Washington Climate Strike. And before I start, I want to take a moment to recognize that we are standing on Duwamish land and acknowledge their courage in this ongoing fight for climate justice. I want to thank everyone that school strike today to fight for our future and our world's survival. It is so incredible to be, to be surrounded by many passionate and committed youth. I am here today because I am terrified for our future. I am terrified that climate change will kill millions of people by 2030. I am terrified because this is not just climate change, this is a climate crisis. Yes. The climate crisis disproportionately affects people of color, and people living in poverty. Minority groups and people of lower socioeconomic status are more likely to live in environmentally hazardous areas and experience asthma, heart attacks, and premature death. Patriarchy, colonialism, racism, and capitalism are monumental factors in the climate crisis and how it affects different populations. A new report from the Environmental Protection Agency found that 60% of the population near toxic waste sites are people of color. And people of color are two times more likely to live without potable water and modern sanitation. This is environmental injustice. Flint, Michigan, a black majority city, has been facing a water crisis for five years. This is environmental injustice. Brazil's government is slashing environmental regulations on the Amazon and pushing out its indigenous peoples. This is environmental injustice. Low-income people of color in South Africa have to choose between affording water and food during their drought. This is environmental injustice. The Duwamish River is the most toxic environmental area in the U.S. In consequence to years of contamination, babies born by the Duwamish have a shorter life expectancy than the rest of King County. This is environmental injustice! The Environmental Justice Foundation estimates that 150 million people will be displaced by the climate crisis by 2050. These climate refugees from predominantly Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Sub-Saharan Africa will need to find new homes. This is environmental injustice! Yes! Justice is your access to breathable air, clean water, and food. Black and brown lungs matter. This not in my backyard approach will not go on any longer. We are all affected by environmental injustice. If our brothers and sisters in other parts of the city, country, or world are suffering, so are we. When environmental injustice is taking place, the people that are directly impacted by it have little political power to make change. People of color have seen 95% of their claims against polluters denied by the EPA. 
This administration has even proposed to shut down the EPA's Environmental Justice Office and end programs that allow communities to have input on how key clean air and energy policies are being implemented. Racist! Our government has failed us. Yes. Environmental racism is a direct reflection of a government with corporate interests and prejudiced ideals. I want to take another moment to recognize all the youth standing in solidarity with us as we strike today. Striking is an incredibly powerful form of activism, and it's an honor and a privilege. We must acknowledge the millions of youth of color and youth of lower socioeconomic status that are at the front lines of this crisis, but are unable to strike today. To the youth of lower socioeconomic status and youth of color participating in this movement, I see you, I hear you, and I stand with you. You are a vital part of this movement. I have talked a lot about justice, but I want to take another moment to talk about hope and unity. Systematic injustice is our motivation. This is not a moment, but a movement. Today and over the next week, we are striking in solidarity with millions of youth in 117 different countries. The climate crisis is the greatest threat of our generation, and we refuse to be silent. I encourage you all to keep this passion and energy with the rest of you throughout this weekend, month, year, and lifetime. We must keep showing up and demanding change. Let your passion be contagious. Thank you. Hello. Two years ago, one of the little kids that I work with at just five years old came to me bawling his eyes out. He had watched a television show telling him that he and others are currently in the middle of a crisis. As we heard, the earth is dying. It is slowly dying and it's because of us. This little boy was scared out of his mind. He thought that he wasn't going to live much longer. He was crying and couldn't stop crying. There are so many little kids that are scared we're all scared. We are scared. And nobody, none of the people in power want to do anything about it. They are looking at us and they are thinking, how are we going to make any money off of this? It doesn't matter if we make any money off of saving the climate. It's what's going to keep us alive. It's what's going to keep us healthy. I don't care if the economy crashes. We need to save the climate. There are so many little kids that are scared. They are scared. I'm scared. You guys are scared. We're all scared. And we are mad. We're mad that this is still happening. We're mad that we have to miss school today. I wish I didn't have to miss school today. But I do because the earth is still dying. I wish that I could be in class learning all the homework that I have to do and being stressed out about that. Instead, I'm stressed that I'm not going to have clean water and that the species around me are dying. I should be stressed about the acne on my face. I shouldn't be stressed about how hot our earth is getting. This is not fair. I want to live like a normal 12-year-old girl, but instead, I have to stand here and tell you guys that I'm scared, that you're scared, and that we're all scared. So I'm going to leave here because I want to let all of these amazing people talk. But as I leave, I just want you guys to remember that the people that aren't here today, they're also scared, but they just don't want to be here today. We need to educate people. Let them learn why they should be scared. Everyone should be scared, but some people, they just don't quite understand what's going on. 
So if you're not going to do anything, if you don't have money to donate, which I completely understand, I'm 12 years old, I have nothing to give, but I'm going to give you the gift of an education to teach you about what is happening to this world and how it is dying. So I want you to talk to your parents or talk to your little siblings or older siblings and tell them, explain to them what is going on and explain to them what we can do. Because if everybody learns and everybody is on the same page, I hope that the people in power will see that we're scared and they'll be scared too. Hi, um, my name is Kira. <laughs> Our grandparents' generation protested back in the 60s and early 70s. They protested about the Vietnam War and about the environment. Some things have changed. The Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, was established and the clean air and water laws were passed. Now that generation is in power, but Trump and other people want to roll things back just when climate change stakes are at their highest. Here is a song that Marvin Gaye wrote back in 1971 that's just as relevant today. Whoa, mercy, mercy me. Oh, things ain't what they used to be. No, no. Where did all the blue skies go? Poison is the wind that blows from the north to south and east. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Oh, things ain't what they used to be. No, no. Oil wasted in the ocean and upon our seas, fish full of mercury. Whoa, oh, mercy, mercy me. Whoa, things ain't what they used to be. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> We can't go back. We need to do more. This planet and our lives of our generation is at stake. Thank you. Today, my message is clear and simple. There is a reason that our politicians do nothing about climate change. There is a reason that they do nothing about school shootings. There is a reason that nothing is done to ensure that everyone has equal access to health care. There is a reason that nothing is done to protect our immigrants. There is a reason that we do not have equal pay for equal work. There is a reason that you are better off being rich and guilty than poor and innocent. And there is a reason that the top 1% has more money than the bottom 50%. For our elected officials, it's all about money. Too many of our politicians, both Republican and Democrats, are in the pockets of fossil fuel industries. Too many of our politicians, both Republicans and Democrats, are in the pockets of the NRA. Too many of our politicians, both Republicans and Democrats, are in the pockets of the rich and powerful. Politicians don't care what we, their constituents, think. All they care is what their rich and powerful donors think. So our message is clear, our message is loud, and our message is powerful. We are fed up and we have had enough. Either listen to us and pass the Green New Deal. Institute common sense gun regulations, pass Medicare for all, protect our immigrants, and create a more equitable economy that works for all, or prepare for us to vote you out. Thank you. Hi, um, that was really good. Don't know if I can top that. But um, I'm Charlotte Goldberg, and I'm a 16 year old who goes to Ballard High School. And like many of you, I am skipping school today. And I want to thank everyone who came out and skipped school because it is our generation who is going to suffer the most through um, the climate change. And our kids are going to have to grow up in a world where um, the species are going to be dying. And that is not OK. So we have to fight so that that doesn't happen and we have to make a real change. Woo! Thank you. My name is Monica. 
I'm a junior in high school and I'm here today striking with you all because I, I care about my future so much, just like all of you. Uh, last weekend, I spent my Sunday morning taking a practice SAT because I know how to have a really fun weekend. Um, and I was doing my absolute favorite part, the 45 minute reading comprehension section, uh, when I came across a passage that was actually interesting. It was about how when people think about themselves in the future, they think about their future self in the same way they would think about a stranger. It's why so many people would rather take $50 instantly than take $60 in a month. It's also what makes being a climate activist so hard. Our brains are wired to think of a far off threat as a stranger. And to a lot of people, climate change does seem like a far off threat. It's so easy to fall into the trap of, I can't see it, so it's not here. But it's here, it's not a far off threat. Severe weather conditions play a huge part in our world's refugee crisis. And climate refugees will only continue to grow in number. Flooding ruins the homes and communities of thousands. Uncontrolled forest fires leave destroyed ecosystems in their wake. And this is just the beginning. We all have a part to play in the fight for climate justice. Just being here is a great start. You guys are awesome. Think about it. There's one president and look how many people there are here. Like way more than one. But in order for real change to happen, we can't keep waiting around for the government to do something. We have to make them do something. We have to, facing climate change straight in the eye and getting involved is no longer a choice. We cannot let climate change seem like a far off stranger. Because if we let our world leaders get away with sitting around and doing nothing, there will be no future left to strike for. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Sophia. I wanna thank you so much for being here on strike in solidarity with the global climate movement. You are all so important and it's beautiful to see everyone here. I think it's so important incredibly important to remember that the government we have is by and for the people and that if they're not doing their job it is our responsibility in every way to make that known and I know a lot of you cannot vote but there are other things you can do to make sure you have your voice heard find your council meetings and go to them make your voice heard say what you need to say about the climate movement about what we need to do and get it heard get it in there Write letters to your local representatives. Make sure they know what you want them to do. A lot of the ones in Seattle are pretty good. Make sure that if you hear of one that is not doing well, who is not following our vision for a sustainable, environmentally friendly, immigrant friendly, and just happy, healthy, sustainable future, make that heard. Make sure they know what you need and what we all need. The planet is dying, we know that. On our current trend, we are slated to reach almost 4% degrees Celsius increase. The maximum our planet can sustain is one and a half. We need to pass the Green New Deal. We need to pass so many reforms. Make your voice heard. Keep protesting. Keep striking. It doesn't take money if you don't have it. It doesn't take time if you don't have it. But make sure you have your voice heard and you make sure that people understand the urgency that the youth are feeling today. Thank you. Okay. Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming out to strike today. My name is Olivia Schroeder and I'm a senior at Lakeside School in Seattle and I also work on the creative team for the Washington Youth Climate Strike Organization alongside organizing this event. So, I'm incredibly passionate about advocacy and protecting our planet. I'm here today because I want to help protect the Earth for our generations, our futures, and for the futures and generations to come. The Youth Climate Strike Movement is built in urgency and necessity of action, and the realization that the time to act is right now. Youth around the world are raising their voices and demanding that their governments pass legislation to protect our planet. 
Well, we can explicitly vote for candidates in legal, local, federal, state elections. We don't have a vote, we do have a voice. So right now, we are doing what we need to do, we are using that voice. I am striking today because I believe in the power of the youth, the power of this movement, and in the power of advocacy as a whole. I've grown as an activist, and my goal is to inspire others to fight and protect what they love. The point of this movement, the point of our movement, is to take charge and fight for the planet and fight for our futures. This movement tells it how it is, so right now, I will do the same. Our oceans are rising. They are acidifying. Our oceans are the most abundant resource on our planet. They give us 70% of the air we breathe. One in five jobs in the entire world depends on the ocean. We have exploited and depleted the habitat that covers three quarters of our planet. Reefs are dying as we overfish and pollute. I'm incredibly passionate about marine conservation and watching as we continue to hurt our oceans every day is devastating. I volunteer at the Seattle Aquarium and act as an ambassador for multiple other marine conservation organizations. My dream is to work in marine biology and marine conservation. Yeah. My distant dream of the future fades as every day new species become extinct and go endangered. And as entire coral reefs collapse and as tankers leak millions of gallons of crude oil into the water. That is why I'm here today. The world is changing before our very eyes. Last summer, the air quality of Seattle was the worst of any city in the entire world. Think about that for a second. We've had fires in the Olympic rainforest. The trees are covered with moss. They are not supposed to burn. It is a rainforest, but yet they are. One of the most important ecosystems on our earth with its incredible biodiversity, the Amazon rainforest is on fire. Our planet is literally going up in flames because our legislators and governments have failed to act. No longer will we allow this to happen. Enough is enough. It is time to listen to the wisdom of the youth. We have proven over and over that we are here for the fight. We will not stand by and let our planet continue to die. We will ensure that proper legislation is passed that guarantees the protection of our Earth. Climate change is without a doubt the most pressing issue of our generation and of our world, and we will use our collective voice to combat it. I'm so excited to see where this movement goes, and I'm so proud to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Uh, here we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lila. I'm one of the co-Seattle lead organizers for this event. Uh, and I sat down today, or yes, uh, earlier this week to write a speech for this event and I knew in my head what I wanted to say was that you should all take steps to address the climate crisis by going vegan and using metal straws. But honestly, I just didn't have it in me to point to these easy, save the turtles, take shorter showers shit because it's not true. I'm a teenager, I'm 14, and I am so fucking scared. <laughs> the challenge that is before us, this massive task of teaching everyone about the climate crisis is so big, so seemingly impossible, I don't think there's anything truthful I could say right now that would reassure us or make us feel much better. In the U.S. in particular, we face an extraordinary problem. People like our own president are climate deniers. And I am so fucking scared. You hear climate activists and scientists and teachers and news reporters talking about the UN report that came out saying that we have 11 years left to live, but you never hear about what our planet will be like once that time runs out. Take the year 2032, for instance, the first presidential election after we have reached the point of climate no return. What will candidates' climate, climate policies be like then? I am so fucking scared. 2032 will only be the third presidential cycle that I can vote in. And 
I, it'll take two more presidential cycles until I'm old enough to run for president in 2040. What will the world look like then? I am so fucking scared. So, I want to be honest with you all. <laughs> I am not a nature person. I don't love to ski or hike or spend time laying on my back looking at clouds in the sky. But my god, I am so fucking scared. The climate crisis is all around us, manifesting in ever prevalent weather stories like years after year of unusually dangerous hurricanes. And every summer it feels like we set a new record for the hottest summer. And every time a report or article like that comes out, people shrug it off like it's just an unusual year or that this won't continue to happen or that it isn't a pattern. And that is so fucking scary. The only solution that seems to be of any kind of option to me right now is to continue to hold youth demonstrations like this one to keep this issue front and center in the newspaper and in people's thoughts every day. We have to skip school in every option we can and shout and scream and demand more from the people who represent us and we aren't even old enough to vote for and the companies that are polluting this earth at much faster rates than any individual or group of people possibly can because this issue is so fucking scary. Hi, my name is Sophia Rasamit, and I'm here today striking for climate because when I first learned about it, I couldn't believe that anybody, that people weren't doing anything. I couldn't believe that I have to be here today to strike for, so just so I can have breathable air. I'm sorry, but I can't believe that. Thank you. I just want to start off by saying good morning to all of these beautifully proactive people. I'm so appreciative to see everybody here today. And I'm a, just another participant. I did not get the opportunity to organize any of this. And I also just want to thank all of you who participated in the organization. When I was seven, I remember talking to my best friends. We were talking about the hypothetical of our future families. And I remember us discussing a lot about the kids that we wanted and what we were gonna name them. Just because the beauty of a perfect family is something too irresistible not to be a conversation topic as a young child. And 10 years later, last night I cried. I cried because I realized that I can't bring myself to bring kids into a world that's dying. I can't bring myself. I can't bring myself to bring life into a world when we can't save the life of the world itself. I just can't. So this is where we're at. And I still have hope. I still think that there is a future and I still hope that I can say one day I am comfortable bringing more life into this world. My main question is, why the people in a democracy are not being properly represented. This I do not understand. Our representation and our current administration posts false facts on Twitter. Our president, Donald Trump, tweeted during the climate crisis, during the climate forum for de the Democratic Convention, that nobody in the US lives in a, in a county where the, where the particle pollutants exceed the recommendations of the World Health Organization. 15% of the U.S. does. That is just wrong. That is completely false. And it is terrifying that we are literally under the power of an administration so misinformed. My name is Madison Paulus, and I am the president and current, I'm the current president of the recently created Students for Political Action Club at Roosevelt High School. And I'm here today to protest climate change. And I believe that the biggest impact that we can make now is going to have to be at a legislative level. And we as constituents can have the power. We need to utilize our First Amendment rights that are the core of our democracy. This is what we need. I'm Maddie Paulus on 
Instagram and my email is M-A-D-I period P-A-U-L-U-S at Gmail. Contact me and we will get a group together to go and lobby our representatives and actually get them to do something about it. We matter, our voices matter, they have to listen to us. We're at a point where our brains are telling us fight or flight and I choose to fight. Thank you. I do want a future for me, for my family, and for my little sister who is 10 months old. I do not want her to grow up, be my age, and have to die because of climate change. At my school, we got to speak to um, a, city council's, a city council runner, and they said that a, that a local change will not, will not affect a, climate change overall, but that is not true. We got rid of straws and now Starbucks is getting rid of straws. And there was, there was an article on Seattle Times that said one of every four teenagers in the poll that they took were terrified to even just think about climate change because they don't know what their future will be. Thank you. student at Salmon Bay School in 8th grade. Um, and something interesting happened earlier this week. Our Seattle Public School Superintendent, uh, uh, Juno, said that uh, she won't endorse uh, the like, making it an excused absence to miss school for this event because she said that that the best thing that students can do is be in science class. And, oh sure, it's great to have an education, great to learn about science, because we need to, but, well, we haven't really seen proof that these big companies or the government is going to listen to any science. They just are like, oh, well, oh, but I need more money because I need to save up for that yacht that I really wanted to buy with that fancy little theater in it, and it was so cool. Also, they keep on telling us that, oh, this is an issue for the future. Oh, the Earth is going to die in, like, billions of years. Well, there are people dying right now. There are people dying in the Bahamas. There are people dying in Brazil. The Amazon rainforest is getting burned to the ground. And you know whose responsibility it is? The government. Uh, about a week, I think it was, before uh, the president of uh, the prime minister of Brazil said he wanted to wipe out the native communities, the indigenous lands of Brazil. And guess what started to happen? Burning through this fire is burning through this very sacred uh, indigenous land in Brazil, and it's not fair. And when people are suffering, people are suffering there, people are suffering in the Bahamas, we should be thinking, we should be feeling that suffering too. Because these people are our brothers and sisters of the human race. But you know, I guess big corporations think they're just collateral damage because that yacht is really cool. But, and I, something just about me striking. I'm not striking because I want to. I want to go to school. I want to learn because I sh that's what I should have to worry about is learning and getting good grades and getting a high GPA and like what after school clubs I want. But at this moment, I can't because my life depends on me striking here. So I'm striking. We're all striking because our lives depend on it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, my name is Ella. I go to Salmon Bay Middle School and I am missing school right now. I know I know a lot of us are missing school right now. I want to be in school. I do not need want to miss school. I need to miss school, okay? Because this is a serious problem and I know that we can and will succeed. Um I know some people 
mostly older generation think that this is not their problem. It is everybody's problem. Some people may think this is not a problem right now. They'll say it doesn't directly affect me, but it does. It's a problem right now. It will always be a problem. And I know that other generations like before us should not have created this problem, but like we need to fix it. Just because it may not be directly affecting you right now, it will. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Tor. I'm Iris Petke. I'm a 17-year-old disabled trans woman. Um, and I'm here because this is a crisis. We shouldn't need to be here. The climate shouldn't be like this. And but we are because we need to be. But that shouldn't be how it is. Um, yeah. Um. We are. Oh, okay. We are here because we are, and our children and narwhals are going going to go extinct within all of our lifetimes. And narwhals are important. Yeah. No walls. Hi, my name is Attila, and I'm only nine years old. And I'm here to protest for climate change. And and I think that we should stop making CO2 and putting it into the atmosphere. Hello, my name is Alice Watson. I'm, I'm 16, I go to Roosevelt High School, and I want to start off with just thanking everyone here for coming because y'all are amazing. No matter what age you are, if you are zero, if you are 102, thank you for coming today because it takes courage. So, just to start off with that. Um, at moments like these when you see just, you know, the ground you're standing on and the planet that you live on just being destroyed, I really want to go up to administrative people such as Trump or really anyone that has the power to change this but yet still doesn't because we of race or the color of our skin and it's ridiculous I just want to forget those titles and go up to that person from one person to another person and say bro what are you doing like stop just like <laughs> um, I had the opportunity to go to Guatemala uh, earlier this year and Guatemala is a developing B country we are a developed country and um, I saw the difference. I went to the Guatemala City trash dump and it is so toxic there that you, I didn't even get to walk into the dump because it would kill me. I had to stand on a cliff about half a mile away and look out on this layers and layers and layers of trash. And in those layers and layers and layers of trash, I saw people and families walking with little kids. And if you look close enough in those layers of trash, you can just see bodies. And that's all an effect of these systematic issues that involves intersectionality with climate change. They relate to each other. And we use climate, like, if you look at our world as a machine, right? And you have inputs and outputs. And you have people who ben benefit, benefit from it and people who don't. The people who benefit from it are people who have privilege, such as myself. Like, I am lucky enough that I live in the U.S. and that I'm white and I'm, I have money and I have necessities, right? And the people who are benefiting from these issues are usually the people making the issues, right? The people who get the better side of the situation consume and actually make the most damage, and that's crazy to think about. 
Um, when you look back at history, you look at how America was made, you look at world issues like the war and all sorts of things, multiple wars, many wars and how they planned out, you think, what were we thinking? Well, if you look at people in the future, they're going to look back at us and they're going to say, what were they thinking? And the fact of the matter is we might not even actually have future people to look back and ask ourselves, what were we doing? There's going to be no future. There's so many beautiful things on this planet. There's so many different cultures and arts and amazing things. And there's languages and food and spice. And, you know, that is all going to be gone because we need oil. We need to drive our cars. We're, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. And I want to thank you all for making a stand to it. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, good. We're the same height. <laughs> well, that's a hard act to follow, but I'm up here because I want to tell you a story from your movement. My name is Ellie. I go to Vashon Island High School. And today, almost my entire junior class is here. A week and a half ago, one of our seniors, Juna, I don't know her last name, I'm sorry, Juna, started printing out flyers and handing them out so that we would know how we were getting here, what time it was, and what we were doing. And she inspired almost half the school. Whether or not they could be here, everyone considered it. She handed out so many flyers that people started putting them up and she got in trouble for not having them be signed by our principal. Yeah. Juna also printed shirts. This shirt she printed, she designed it and she printed it. Everybody from my high school that's here today has something that she made because she helped us to organize and to plan this so that we could all be here. So thank you, Juna. The last thing I'll say is that today, in my comparative government class in first period, there were eight people. There were two people in first period junior English, and almost all of our teachers have canceled their tests for today because so many people are missing them. Thank you. My name is Lila Shroff. I'm 17. I'm Sophia Ristabin. I'm also 17. Uh, and I'm Oliver, and I'm also 17. We're from Mercer Island High School, and we're here to present a slam poem about climate change. <laughs> Blink. You, you open, open your eyes, but from the moment you are born, the world you live in is not the world we live in today. Childhood, growing up, yet the books you read of kids climbing trees or playing in the sand are far too hard to understand because you will never know how that life would be. Fifth grade, you pledge allegiance to the United States of America, one nation and underwater, and now your parents are fighting because water levels are rising. There's no compromising that your home will soon be gone. High school history, you learn about the 21st century when humanity had a chance. It tossed aside as the tides would rise, and with tears streaming down your face, you wonder what is to be of the human race now that there is nothing left to do. But together we can change that. We put pride in breaking records because it means we're getting better. But here's one painstaking record-breaking fact that shows that we're not getting better in fact. You see, the levels of greenhouse gases are rising the fastest that we've ever seen before, and yet we keep releasing more. But together we can change that. The corporations of our nation say they have no relation to our changing globe. But 71% of global emissions come from 100 companies alone. Are profit shares and corporate flares really more important than the health of our home? For who cares about market share if there's no market left to own? But together we can change that. Elected officials are supposed to lead us. But well, what are we to do when their priorities lead us away from the good of the order? And when press, they say with remorse that yes, they like the outdoors, but they still can endorse the fact that climate is changing. They say it's an important topic, but they can top it with something more pressing is addressing right now. They say the world can wait. But, but together, together we can change that. that. Plastic, plastic or paper, you pick plastic. The light's left on. Your water is running. Your car is idling. Trash in your recycling. It may seem small, but, but look at the big picture. Forest fires are already taking lives. California, death toll, one fire takes 79. 
line. The Great Barrier Reef, more than 50% bleach. Deforestation has gone unchecked for years. Half the world's tropical forests have been cleared. But together we can change that. You see, time is running out, but it hasn't run out yet. So let's start working while we're still ahead. Just like one vote can swing an election, your actions can change the direction of our warming globe. So don't be indifferent. You don't have to stand alone. Together, we can still make a difference so future generations can call this planet their home. Salim and I'm a senior at Roosevelt High School and, uh, yeah. and I'm so over this I'm so over it um, I don't have anything organized to say but um, I remember when I was in eighth grade I watched Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson on Netflix and it was a great show yeah oh yeah fabulous um, but I remember watching it and just being so stunned by how perfect everything is for us and how beautiful this world is and how beautiful our universe is and how beautiful we are and I just think that is absolutely insane we're all miracles and like this is a miracle right here and it gives me so much hope and I just saw there was a guy with a sign that said we are what hope looks like to birds and I thought that was one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard um but yeah that's all I wanted to say thank you guys for being here it's good to see you thank you very much everyone, I, my name is Juan, I'm 18 years old and I just wanted to make my vo voice heard today, so. We the people have failed our mother earth, the only planet capable of sustaining human life, our only home, and we watch it burn before our eyes. But we the youth will be the generation that ends the cycle of bullshit. Yes. We, are the youth that will, we are the youth that will be the generation that saves our only home, our only planet, because there is no planet B. We, the youth, will scream at the top of our unhealthy and polluted lungs to make our voice heard. And we, the youth, will stand up to our, cor our corrupted government and make a difference. We, the youth, will make the difference needed to save this earth. And we, the youth, will be the generation that changes this, this earth. And, and just, yeah. Thank you. My name is Sierra Stover, and it's time to wake up. We are at war. This is not something to sit on. GMOs are genocide. Your water is filled with poison. They are not here to support you. They are here to come after everything you have so they can be on full top control. And they're not. We are in control. We the people, we are fighting for this earth, and we will never stop fighting. So wake up, open your eyes, and make sure that you go forth in every moment with your heart. Nothing but your heart, because the second you start judging is the second the system is won. The second the system is alive and well is the second you look at your peers with judgment. So love and fight for this earth and for our humanity and our lives. Bless yourselves, people. I love you all so, so, so much. That was a pretty amazing note to end on. Let's have one more huge round of applause for all of our youth speakers today. So, um, it's almost time to hit the streets marching. But before we start, um, I just want everyone back there to make their way to the main stage. So if you're towards the back, let everyone know to make their way here so that everyone can hear what we have to say before we get moving. So I, you probably can't hear me. I'm going to speak really loud. Everyone way, way in the back by the Climate Action Families Station. Everyone come to the front. Come towards the stage so that everyone can hear these messages. <laughs> 